So let's talk about what we've been doing and what we're going to do about this stuff. So at the beginning of the year, we released a couple of videos about filament, both talking about problems with it, about how it's packaged, how it's manufactured, and also talking about why it costs what it does. And these videos elicited a fairly strong response from all of you that made us think we should probably do more than just make a video. The reason being is that we're very well positioned to produce filament and that we've been doing it for quite some time. We have been making filament for our internal use at our print farms, our mass production print farms for several years, but we have always done it just for ourselves because it's very easy to produce industrial raw materials for yourself. It is very difficult to produce a consumer material. But as we looked at it closer, we were positioned to fix many of the problems, especially around cost. As a 3D printing factory, as our core business producing parts, having a lower cost material source improves our margins over there. So we're able to kind of take it in the teeth so long as we get benefits other places. Producing filament for consumers lets us run our extrusion lines more efficiently and more continuously. We're able to turn them on and keep them on for longer, which means that it costs less to produce a spool of filament than if we just turn them on and shut them off on a regular basis, which we kind of have to do since our extrusion lines overproduce for what our farms actually consume. So the benefit that we're able to bring then is to pass that optimization on to the customers. Since our filament lines are able to produce more efficiently, we are able to basically sell that excess material nearly at cost in order to then have a more efficient and even lower cost material supply for our print farms. Basically by running more, making more filament, we get more economies of scale, which do reduce the cost of the print farm business so that the cost of the filament itself is quite low. So we started doing the math on it and also started testing it. In May of this year, we released uh, an initial batch of filament with a uh, basic pricing to start out to see, number one, what would be entailed in delivering product to you, what kind of assumptions we had made that were incorrect around shipping or format, and see how we could optimize from there. That response was amazing, and thank you so much all who participated in that first batch of filament. It showed that it was worth pursuing this and that you guys would actually support it. So thank you so, so much for that. From that initial test back in May, we ended up purchasing a filament extrusion line in June to commit to this project of low cost filament. This goal to get to basically $10 a spool, which will require several steps but that extruder was the first step in making that achievable. So throughout August, when we brought in that extruder, we spent that month upgrading it, improving it, putting it together, testing it out and verifying it. And we had our first batches of filament off of it, which was very exciting and we've started to use inside of our print farm. Again, an advantage we have by having a print farm is that we have to eat our own cooking. Any filament that we deliver to you, we have been using ourselves. So we know when it's not working out very well and there's really no way to pass it along because we suffer more than you can even suffer if our filament is not good enough because we have clients who depend on us. So it keeps us honest to make sure that our filament is very, very good. So we're finally here in September and we have filament, we have the extrusion line, we have verification that it's worth pursuing. So we have made clear, crystal clear, very clear filament. There is no yellowing in this. This month we will be releasing another uh, larger batch of filament that is crystal clear. The reason for crystal clear is that that is the native color of the filament, so there is no way we have to worry about color consistency throughout the batch, and we're able to focus on packaging, spool quality, uh, making sure shipping works well, making sure the other parts of the system are up before we increase complexity by adding in colorants and making sure that color consistency is there. The value of this clear also is that you guys are able to inspect us. Having it 
Completely transparent means that you can see if there is any contamination, any sort of staining, any sort of issues within the spool of filament at all that we might not be aware of or that you wanna call us on so that we can actually get better. The transition here, even though we have been making filament for a long time, is that a single error for us is one error out of 100 kilograms is not that big of a deal if there is a variation in diameter. But when we are producing filament for consumers, a single error in your kilogram is a big deal, and we have to make sure that we are doing better than that, to make sure that it's not one error per 100 kilograms where we grind it up and then run it back through the extruders, but where there's just no errors to where you guys can rely on us to produce good quality material for you continuously in a format that you can use. Creating a product has a lot of facets to it, even though it's just filament wound around a spool. It is a simple process, but that does not mean it is a trivial or even an easy process. Very often, the easy things are the most difficult. But we are set up, we're practiced up, and we've made good filament, so we do trust that our own cooking is good. Once we have released that crystal clear batch, we will release a black batch of filament. The reason we're going to black is because it is a reliable color that we use a lot of ourselves, and again, is a good test as far as colorant because it is very simple to make a black filament that is very consistent throughout batches, and black is one of the more popular colors that people really need. So we will release that, and the expectation is to keep it in stock throughout the year so that people can purchase at any time. That being said, we will still be in a batch cycle here for the foreseeable couple of months as we ramp up production more and more in the context of all the other projects that we have going on. So that is the startup. Here in September and October, we will release that clear and that black, and those will be the official launch of Tangled Filament. From there, we have the Christmas season that we gotta take care of, because again, we're a print farm. But then in January, we will double down again on filament and expand colors again to white and gray. And we plan to introduce a filament subscription to where you can guarantee material for yourself each month or for your print farm. You can commit to two kilograms per month or 100 kilograms a month or whatever is necessary for your utilization, which will then allow us to optimize our production over time so that we can pass more savings onto you. Throughout this process, filament will be gliding between $18 and $22 per spool. This is as we get ramped up and as we kind of cash flow the thing in order to get it going. It's still very good quality filament, but more affordable than what is available right now and made completely inside the US. But then we will spend 2024 optimizing and pushing on it. The very first optimization that we know we can do is that we can change our material source. Right now, where we source much of our PLA because of reasons around consistency and quality and that kind of stuff, we are restricted to a reasonably expensive kind of raw material base for the beads. But we do have a supplier lined up who is able to provide us lower cost material with an equivalent quality, though different parameters for PLA than what we have historically used. That lower cost material will allow us to drop the cost of the material down to about $15 per spool. This we expect to implement in February of 2024. So that is the first big optimization, is having ramped up our volume of production to purchase large enough quantities of this particular supplier to drastically reduce the cost of the filament by almost 20 or more percent from wherever we were this fall. Then over that year, we will continue to optimize. Rather than using one kilogram spools, which we will be launching with in batches of three, we will design and start manufacturing a new spool based off of our slant spool design that will be two kilograms. This is an ideal weight for most machines and we plan to optimize the design of it in such a way to where it is still compatible with most one kilogram spool systems. That way it's still compatible with any machines that you may have, but is a more efficient form factor for production. And this spool will be a fairly big improvement because the one kilogram spool was chosen not because it's ideal for 3D printing, but because it was the one that was there. Us moving to a two kilogram or slightly different format spool will hopefully introduce a new standard that is less wasteful for those who are consuming larger amounts of filament. This again will basically shave off another dollar of cost because plastic spools don't cost nothing. So shaving that off allows us to pack the material more efficiently and reduce the cost of the spool itself, while also reducing the waste on your side. 
Next, we will be reducing shipping costs. Right now, our production facility is inside of Boise, Idaho, which is not ideal for fulfillment. But in 2024, we are opening up a secondary uh, print farm facility in Texas. And within that facility, we will also implement filament. That will be implemented by about September of 2024, if not sooner, at which point we will be reducing our shipping expenses and therefore will again be able to pass those savings on to you. This will basically drop the cost of filament down to about $13 per spool, all at the same time maintaining the quality. We don't want to make cheap, cruddy filament. That's already done. We want to make good filament that is simply low cost by taking advantage of scale and optimized manufacturing. This is a traditional type of manufacturing solution where we just focus on each one of the core problems that adds cost and make it more efficient as best as we are able. Now, that is 2024. We, by the end of 2024, we will have reduced the cost of filament down to $13. By the way, throughout this entire process, we will be maintaining a profit. We are not doing this purely altruistically. We have to ensure that it is a sustainable business model so that it can continue to exist. Because if we flame out and fail, then everybody will say, low cost $10 filament can't be done and it will languish for another little while. So we have to be very careful to make sure that it is a sustainable business that we can operate so that we can pull the entire industry in this direction as much as possible or require the rest of the industry to innovate new solutions that justify what the cost of filament is. But even though it will take us a year to get down to those $13, at the end of that year, we do hit the 10. All of this, all of this planning is around PLA filament. And the reason we are using PLA is because it is the most commonly used filament and it is one of the most forgiving actually to manufacture. It has the least amount of processing, but it is a fairly expensive raw material to work with to make filament. A more affordable raw material is PET-G. So in February of 2025, we will introduce a PET-G filament spool. And that filament spool will cost $10 per kilogram. This is completely doable with today's raw material cost of PET-G and what we expect the manufacturing cost to be through the ongoing basis over this next year. The reason we don't start with PET-G immediately is because, again, in the context of making a product for you, the consumers, PET-G absorbs water from the air. It needs additional dehydration before it's processed into filament. And if for some reason we screw up that process, we don't want the initial launch of the material to be something that could potentially absorb water because you're in the most humid place in the world and there's a puncture in the bag. We don't want to set ourselves up to fail by introducing opportunities to fail. So we will be starting with PLA, which is both most commonly used, most commonly requested, and the easiest for us to successfully deliver to you until we set all of the other processes into shape. Then we we will release PETG, which is slightly less forgiving, and then ideally over time continue to release other materials as we're able. But that PETG will be a $10 per kilogram material made fully in the US and of good quality. We will have all the dehydration equipment in place and we will have all the QC processes in place to make sure that each spool that you get is good and reliable. But even after we hit that, we won't be done. After the introduction of that spool, I imagine that we'll have quite a bit of demand for it. So we will be busy. We'll continue to add in new extrusion lines to help this process along. But we're going to continue to optimize. We will continue to change the spool. We will continue to improve the materials. Our team has developed all kinds of new materials over the last couple of years that are fine for us, but for some reason have not been introduced into the industry that solve all kinds of issues from layer adhesion to the appearance of layer lines themselves. But that's for a different video. We will continue to improve the filament, but once we hit that price mark, that is something that is exceptionally useful to the industry as a whole. We at Slant3D have been working for years to bring mass production 3D printing into the common public eye to where people can access it and use it. And the cost of the raw materials has been one of the challenges that we have always had. So this project is useful to us as much as it is to you. It helps us to continue to reduce the cost of our supply chain. Because if we are producing thousands of tons of filament for the consumer market, it reduces the cost of our parts that we produce through our print farms. 
But even more than that, we do want to help encourage other print farms. We want to produce a material supply chain to where other print farms can be created so that we're not the only one holding the flag in this process, but there are other companies that are able to build up and help bring the manufacturing industry into Industry 4.0, where they can use print farms to mass produce pieces without the cost of molds, without the cost of tooling and warehousing and shipping. They are able to have a robust supply chain to produce large quantities of plastic parts very quickly, very easily, very reliably, and at a very high standard of quality. So we hope you'll subscribe and come along with us as we get to $10 filament. Have a great day, everybody.